Thalassophobia is an intense and persistent fear of the sea. But not just fear of water itself, but the fear of what could exist below the water's surface. It's the fear of not knowing if an unknown creature could be swimming just below your feet, or what lurks beyond the shoreline as the water gets deeper and darker. If you suffer from this, Subnautica is not the game for you. Initially released as an indie survival game in December of 2014, it's developed a full story now and can be considered complete, with its sequel, Below Zero, in development and in open access on Steam now. But, should you play Subnautica in 2020? Subnautica preys on thalassophobia, or more accurately, preys on the fear of the unknown. But the way that this drives gameplay, and even story, is incredibly interesting and very engaging. At its core, this is a survival game. You have a health, food, and water meter, as with many other survival games, and also an oxygen meter to emphasize the diving and underwater elements of the game. You enter the game world after literally falling out of the sky onto a water-covered planet. You have very little in terms of sustainable food or useful tools. You can collect resources in the local shallow water to get you more food, water, and even useful metals like copper or titanium. And then you look out of the shadows, into the dark nothingness that lies beyond, and Subnautica starts to reveal its true genius. Eventually, you will get nudged by voice communications to explore the giant crash ship you bailed from, the Aurora. Or a survival message might come, and you'll wonder, can you get to that fellow escape pod? Is someone still alive? Or maybe you'll simply need a resource and have to go a little bit over that cliff edge. Into the dark. Into the unknown. And this is the beauty of Subnautica. Instinct tells you that darkness is bad. And it's not wrong. The further from the shallows you go, the less safe you are. But the game ever so slowly entices you into that dark. Into that unknown. Technically, you can free roam anywhere you want in this game from minute one, but most players simply won't. They will stick to the shallows, and the fear of the unknown is what will keep the player on the correct track. You will explore slowly, limited by food, water, oxygen, and most importantly, your own confidence, which will slowly grow as you go further and further afield. Initially, leaving the shallows seems a terrifying prospect, but by the end of the game, you'll be diving hundreds of meters under the ocean in pitch black. It's a masterclass in exploration in gaming. The exploration is not limited by the developer, but tamed by human nature. Every element is subtly designed to emphasize this, from echoey sound design to limited vision deep in the ocean. So you might be saying, should I explore? Is there a story? And the answer is pretty simple. Yes. The story in Subnautica may not come across immediately obvious, but it's drip fed to you in the form of broadcasts, audio logs, and just finding things as you generally explore. There's not a lot of forced storytelling here. The story feels very organic. Outside of an initial mission to repair a reactor leaking radiation, the game never rushes you. You will only be compelled by your own curiosity. And when you dive deep into this story, you'll find mystery, intrigue, all wrapped under the veil of this survival game. Even better, the horror elements this game employs are completely independent from its storytelling. You're never frightened by what might happen next in the story, only by what stands in the way of it being told. By the environment. By the creatures. This means you're always curious to find out what happens next, to where you're being driven. And as that becomes further and further away, in scarier and deeper waters, this curiosity only grows. This style of storytelling is subtly brilliant. Horror games sometimes make me personally want to close the game, as I don't want to get past a certain point. Think what you may, but I want to be encouraged to explore a story, to have my curiosity peaked. While Subnautica may scare me from time to time, the curiosity constantly drove me further and further in the story, and that, in my opinion, is the mark of good storytelling. And okay, we can't discount a very simple fact. This game is gorgeous. 
From shallow reefs to dead coral landscapes to barren wastelands and luminescent caves, the variety at play here is truly stunning. Combined with a constant filter of blue from the underwater landscape, and Subnautica's ability to play with lighting, the environment can be eerily empty or stunningly vibrant, and somehow often does both back to back. Every area of the game has different elements to understand, flora to find and creatures to avoid, and they're all so visually different. Everything's instantly recognisable when you're somewhere new. This is so extreme, you can navigate around the map simply by monitoring what biomes you pass through, and you can instantly tell simply from visuals even 100 metres above the sea floor when you enter a new one. This allows Subnautica to do away with maps, or navigation systems for the most part, and plays back into the exploration we covered earlier. The creature design is also excellent. Everything feels alien like it should. See-through fish are fairly safe, and those shark-looking creatures just out of reach you know are bad, because they relate, in your mind, to something familiar, but remain different enough to be alien and unusual. But why should you not play Subnautica? Firstly, it sells itself as a survival game, and I guess in the traditional sense, it's not. This game goes so deep into your head it occasionally borders on psychological horror, more so than many other survival games. Especially for those people that can get nervous or anxious in gaming, this can really prey on you. I promise you, watching this game is an entirely different experience to playing it, and that just might not be for you. It's also story driven enough that the lack of post game can feel somewhat underwhelming, at least compared to the main game's experience. The replayability comes mostly in, well, replaying it, and that's not to everyone's taste. And it requires a fair amount of independence from the player. There really isn't much hand holding here. If you get lost, you could get into real trouble. The game will not tell you where to go in most instances. If you do not push yourself to find out what could lurk in that hole, you may simply never find out. And you may miss out on something truly special. So, should you play Subnautica in 2020? Well, yes. If you can handle the anxiety-inducing darkness, the exploration is fantastic. If you can push yourself to find out what lies in that cave, you'll be rewarded with stunning environments. Subnautica may mess with your head, but it's done in a way that will fuel your engagement with the game, reward you for taking chances, and it's one of the most fulfilling experiences in a survival game I've experienced in several years. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you really liked it, and if you want to catch me live, you can catch me at twitch.tv slash gigahertzgames. I'll leave a link to all of it in the description below. Thanks.